Today's tool room tips are going to be making a special lock nut with set screw locking such that you can indicate in the super abrasive wheels and be able to tighten them without having them move when you go to tighten them up as you indicate them in. And a means of uh, putting a little protective strip on your indicator, your DTI, so that you can indicate on these wheels with um, uh, a little better uh, ability to see what's going on because as it wears a little spot it bridges multiple particles and gives a smoother reading and also doesn't damage the uh, the probe tip and also some uh, tips on uh, dressing these wheels with uh, a molybdenum stick or a piece of uh, cold rolled steel so let's get to it I'm taking this up to uh, cherry red to temper it back to make it drillable it's pretty hard to begin with so uh, I will slowly back away from the flame once I get this fairly uh, hot and so it doesn't chill off too quick. The collet mounted stop that I've shown in the previous video on adjustable chuck stops um, is really handy. This is held by the collet in the parting nose and just allows you putting disc shaped things like this in really quick, getting them lined up square without having problems. And it's very easy to just change the length to whatever you need. Just re-grab re with a collet in the back and you're, you're ready to go. And I was making a spacer set here, one to go behind the wheel and one to be a thick washer to take the loads of the set screws and uh, the gap here for the, um, the wheel. Uh, it's always good to space the wheels, in my opinion, off as much as possible where the lock nuts just flush because uh, there's hardly ever a case where you wish the wheel was way back here, but there's lots of cases where you wish the wheel was closer to this so that you didn't run into your fixture or your indexer or whatever. My piece sitting on parallels. So I'm going to drill the six hole pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got these lined up to straddle and tapping this down with a hardened steel block. Brass piece. I find that really works real well. Here's a few indicating techniques that I find very helpful for getting on something like this quickly. Number one, make sure you sweep your indicators a little bit larger than your part so that you know you're going to have room. I come down, get on the part here, I move over with the table till I get a reading on the indicator, and then I look and see how it's behaving, which, which side is dropping off quicker. This side is dropping off a little quicker, so I try to get the balance where that's the same roughly on both sides. Right here, I'm going to zero my indicator. I'm going to zero my x-axis. I'm jogging up, get up, up and around the part. I wouldn't have to jog up if this was the part that was sticking above. Now I'll come down. I won't touch anything. And I crank over until I get up on my indicator, till I'm reading zero. I read what my indicator says on X, 059.5. I divide that in half. So I'm going to back away to, oh, we're just going to do 030. Right there. Re-zero the indicator now. Sweep over to the other side now, and I should be darn close after I jog up. Jog back down. And you see I'm within a half thousand there. So this is a real fast way to get on there, and then this, for a part like this where it's not critical, you can just combine, compare these two sides as far as you can get with the indicator, and um, it's plenty close enough. So I'm just making these equal on both sides should be pretty close to zero. The part's being squashed out around a little bit, but for what we're doing here, that's plenty good enough. But that trick of touching on one side, zeroing, sweeping over the other, that's why we made sure the indicator was in big enough sweep first, move, see what the actual distance is, and um, then you know to move exactly half. Save some time. Spot drilling the six hole bolt circle. This is still pretty tough stuff. Rolling the taps drill for the M5. 
set screws that are going in there. Obviously, you don't need a CNC to do this bolt pattern, but if you do, it's a quick way to get the six hole pattern in there. Chamfer the back sides first before tapping. Use my SPV tapping head here to tap these. It's a real beauty of a tapping head, and I just have that mounted in a cheap Craftsman drill press dedicated to tapping. So now we put this together, we have our spacer, sits on there, still piloted nice and snug on the uh, unturned diameter. Then we have our wheel, and we've got a little play now, which is what we want. We need to be able to bump this around to indicate it in. Our washer, our nut, just goes on snug, and now we're going to put our set screws in. Now we have all the set screws in, just snugged up till I just touch. 467 MP adhesive, my favorite. I have a little piece on the spring steel here. Degrease this with alcohol, degrease the uh, indicator with alcohol, get my duckbill little tweezers here, and I will set this on like thus. Squeeze that down tight, hold that for a few seconds. Bring the indicator up until it's actually leaning on this on this a little bit. Still got our action. The other thing you want to be careful of is you want to make sure that you're actually touching at the tangent point. You don't want to be like a contact point. I'll exaggerate. You don't want to be over here where you're not getting a direct transfer of the wheel uh, movement in right over the tip. All this is is a protector to not abrade the um, the ball and to spread multiple contact points out over the uh, whole contact area and then we can just spin this and we'll come up here and see what our run out is so I'm going to load this till we're over here where it's easy to see and we'll zero this and we'll give this a spin okay so our high is right about there I'm just going to move over where I can tap it gently And that's a little bit too snug. So I'm going to back off a little bit on these screws. One thing that helps a little bit initially is to actually put a little pressure on the probe tip to actually wear and rub all the loose particles off the wheel and to wear a little contact patch on the uh, spring steel. And that can give you a little smoother readings. It gets rid of some of the noise on the indicator. And we'll come up here and get where we can read properly and maybe get in where you can see me tapping at the same time. There we go. And what I'll do is I'm now I'm going to spin this around and I'll look for my high. Okay, it's pretty high right there. All right, so I'm going to put my thumb where that is and then come over and move over where I can tap and just give it a little, little nudge. Some of this you have to interpret how round the wheel is, period. I would say I'm not seeing any uh, possibly yeah I say it's pretty good because we're going to dress some off of this now the whole purpose is you see what the general run out is on that right now uh, let's say what roughly a thousandth now you're going to see that it normally what would happen is you try to tighten this lock nut by spinning it with the wrench and the drag forces on the nut just end up pushing the wheel around and driving you crazy. You just can't do it. Now you see here, I haven't moved anything. I can just, I just gently put a little bit on each one. Now I'll put a little bit more. I'm just being very careful to not nudge it. And I'm just putting finger pressure there on these. And you see that thing sitting dead still where it was. That's the mess. Now that we have all those gently tweaked, now we'll come and we'll tighten these up firmly in each position and that puts an, a really really tight grip on here do not do this with a, a normal vitrified aluminum oxide wheel or any wheel that's a vitrified wheel this will crush the wheel 
and it's no good. And even with these, make sure you have this washer. You need this washer so that these set screw rotational forces where it hits is not on the wheel, which would make it dance around. So that, that's re really important. So now we can take a look at where that was actually bearing on the uh, on the spring steel and how it's how it's chewed a little spot, which is fine. And actually, that bridging, that curvature bridging that it gets, is what enables it to get rid of some of the the uh, hop that you would normally see with an indicator. Not to mention ruining the indicator point, but you'd get rid of all that rumble, uh, a lot of it, to the point where you can indicate in within a thousandth. The whole purpose of truing these wheels to an arbor and leaving them on an arbor is so that they run true, so that you get a nice grind, continuous grind without any wheel hop from eccentricity of the wheel. My particular grinder has a keyway in the wheel because it's a three horsepower spindle, but any reference mark that you could mark on your spindle to line up and put a mark on your wheels to know to put them on each way. Even though it only may, your spindle might run perfect, which is fine, then you don't need this. Perfect meaning, you know, sub tenth, uh, sub 50 millionths. But um, any run out that your, that your spindle has, if you line it up like this each time, then the OD of the wheel is going to repeat and run true each time. So just a good point. I have my pure molybdenum stick in here. This is, I think creates diameter 10 millimeters, pretty close. Uh, and I have my dressing block here, just a fine grit wheel or fine grit uh, uh, stick. And this is to open the wheel up. This is, in my opinion, this is very important in getting a decent dress using the molly stick or uh, sometimes even a piece of just plain coal roll can do a pretty good job on these. Uh, the secret here is keeping the resin really exposed back, eroded. That's what this does, This the, these sticking when we're, we're actually cleaning out the wheel. Uh, we are opening it up. We're, we're taking the resin back from being flush with the diamonds and exposing the diamonds so they poke out and have less, the resin has less of a hold on them, such that when the molly stick comes over here, which is very tenacious and uh, grippy, it's kind of a, a really likes to, I think of it as like a material that wants to gall. So as those particles come, they really tend to like tear in and grab and get ripped out. That's the whole purpose of this. Rip out the particles that are violating running true. So um, another thing that works real well, uh, another important point is having a stop on your table so that you can't suck through. I'm a little bit ahead of center here, but it doesn't matter because I have my stop on. Um, I like to actually run the spindle up, then let it coast, and, and take these cuts at slower speed. I'm taking about five tenths of a shot there. Shouldn't take much. Now I'm going to run regular speed. You got to be very careful with these sticks to not cut a groove and get caught sideways. You only want to get a little amount. But when this is opened up enough, it should eat that wheel like nobody's business. Really just dive in and, and chew it up. You don't want to go sideways. You're going to roll corners on your wheel. You want to just go straight up in. And don't go so deep you have a tendency you could get caught and get twisted. So let's see how this thing runs after that quick dress. You can see here there's still a hole in the wheel. We haven't dressed enough off yet. We've got about a thousandth and a half, thousandth hole in that wheel. So we've got to get rid of that, dress some more. Still needs a little more. I'm going to open it up. Okay, now you can see that wheel is, is running true. That's what you're after. And you can see that didn't take long. Key there, like I say again, is uh, low, low 
Spindle speed helps a lot, meaning coasting down to almost zero and keeping that wheel really opened up with the dressing stick. There's the surface of that wheel. You can see the particles are exposed. Nice and even. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, I think you'll really like this uh, nut trick that really, really makes indicating wheels in and having them stay still work real well and not needing any special wrenches. The spring steel on the indicator um, is, is a big help. The molly stick or even a piece of uh, soft coal roll works for that. Remember, this is a way to dress a wheel, not the way to dress a wheel. This is just one of many ways to dress it, I'm not implying that this is the best. It is a way that works well, requires very little investment, and if done properly, uh, works very fast.